also promising sequencing method uh, that we've been working on since the early 1990s. And now there are two companies, Genia, acquired by Roche, and Oscar Nanopore, both of which are very healthy uh, technologies and, and financially. But Oscar Nanopore now has a primary phone-based read link, which I think is the record for any sequencing method and fairly high uh, consensus stability. The Genia has the advantage of having really high parallelism of 128,000 cores on per chip, and that will be scaling up probably to 8 million cores and probably scale up to billions is not limited by light. Anyway, that's reading, that's basically, I'm not going to go into detail, but that's reading from the, taking DNA and turning it into something that modulates the ion current going through a, a, a pore. The alternative tends to some data from it, so I'm going to distinguish here from the basis with the Genia method, uh, you know, C's in a row, A's in a row, C's, um, for these are the four G's or CCC plus GG. And then AACTT, so the false positive here. So you're going to test going from DNA to conductance. The alternative is going to conductance to DNA. Uh, this is this is a little reading writing biology. We would like to be able to, to turn each uh, activity map uh, of each neuron into something that is compact, um, where it can be stored until we're ready to do serial sex and do the whole rosetta brain thing, where we look at this dome and connect and this case activity. So we, we, we've pursued about five different ways. I'm just going to go through one of them of encoding uh, activity information into nucleic acids. And this one, you know, DNA polymerases, which are all very DNA polymerases, diversely susceptible to cations. Uh, in this case, we have calcium, manganese, and magnesium. So you can put a bunch of cations at once, and the D can show that calcium uh, changes the misincorporation of the G here opposite the T. That's a lot, a lot of good things here. It changes the misincorporation significantly in a physiological range between 10 to the minus 2 and 10 to the 2 micromolar. Uh, but I said I'm going to mention one, but here's another one that is CRISPR related. This is the CRISPR that we talked about. This is how I, most people talk about CRISPR with nucleases, given that you're giving it the guide RNA. But in, in the wild, uh, it, it first has to make the guide RNAs from the phases that are affecting cells, so the phases of this mechanism. And so we, we're trying to harness that to encode the, uh, the, the time sequence of the messenger RNAs that occur in a neuron. And I said with this CC2 method, we can detect DNA, RNA, and protein. Uh, and I really want to give you an example of, of RNA and protein. Um, but there's a very active community looking at ways of tracing the chain of the chromosome. So you actually get through the three-dimensional structure uh, of the chromosomes of high resolution, including the Lulab and the um, Pumpkin and, and Shelley's Law and that. But we also like to do metabolomics in C2, and this is, we have two ways of doing sensor selectors. There's coupling sensors that are various uh, output media. This is one of them using Alistair getting binding proteins to and using protein degradation, which is stabilized by the targets. And here's some data, a synthetic, a really synthetic sensor from progesterone that kind of students just identifying and colleagues work on. So uh, that's the end of this little decade for uh, hopefully I've been provocative enough that you have some questions. Thank you very much. Um, I really like the idea behind trying to see in the amino acid code so that you can get any viral resistance. But don't you think viruses are a bit smarter than us and they'll probably eventually evolve and adapt to be few synthetic amino acids because they become more common in the environment? Yeah, that's certainly a test of hypothesis. I can tell you why it is that we might be a little arrogant on this uh, point. I mean, you're, you're like the, you know, the Jurassic Park because I will find a way. Uh, the reason is that, uh, so if you, um, I mean, first of all, we already got some impact with a very unlikely codon. This is the, the UHC stop codon. But more importantly, if you, if, if you look at the seven codons we're doing next, and you factor the number of those that occur in essential viral genes, almost every, almost every gene is essential to the virus. But if you look at the number that would have to change simultaneously to accommodate it, it is vast. And if you get to that high level of mutagenesis, then you'll be getting a lot of things that are being mutated. That, so, so you know, the virus has never run into this in a while. Usually, you know, uh, there's co-evolution of the host of the virus. The virus is constantly catching up. But here you take the whole thing offline, you make fundamental changes in the host and, and then put it back. So anyway, it, we, we will be testing as soon as we collect the plot. But you know, people like for better for the public bad from a biotechnology standpoint, they have a lot of papers uh, uh, good from standpoint testing this hypothesis. And so we'll, we'll find out. But I'm pretty confident.
for cultural development or visual. And it's hard to test that without knocking them all out. And that's the, and you want to do it very carefully because the LTRs of viruses might have some motor activity. They want to stop them from knocking. And so that's what we did this week. We made a fairly subtle, but irreversible change in the polymerized team of all these copies so that they won't pop, but they still have all the situatory elements in place. And, and then once we get into pigs, then we'll see whether we give them behavioral and cognitive tests to make sure that they're still smart pigs. There's a shaky issue here picking up the really smart pigs that are in trouble. Obviously, and the question relates to the so, so just reframing the question that, that in a ticker tape, is there a trade off between uh, ability and temporal resolution, say, um, and other knobs we can twist? It's, it's very early stage, so we plan to have knobs we can twist, and, and we do. We, 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 we play with the which one race it is, which kind of we're using, so forth. But uh, most of these experiments are very, very primitive. Um, there's a, in addition to that trade off, uh, there's a trade off of time versus resolution, so we can do a longer reporting uh, at lower resolution. And for some purposes, that might, that we might actually want to do something like, instead of looking at the fastest patch of potential to sodium potassium, we might want to look at the slower ones like calcium, because it, it actually, the cell does some integration for us, or maybe even slower, like the intermediate early RNA response to the calcium, because then we can look at a higher level of, of, of the cell integration. So doing this, the, the slow response might not necessarily a bad thing, and we might want to have longer. You know, so anyway, I, I want to leave you the question that this is very, we have four different methods, very crude, all of them very crude uh, level of development, and we invite anybody to. This one is certainly a new way of doing it, but I think I, I, we became the best one of the papers on the physics of the connectivity map. It becomes quite good if you want to measure every neuron, which may be a little too uh, aggressive, but if you did, uh, it's, it's hard to do that with electrodes or almost any other physics based methods. So, synthetic biology is extremely compact, so they're not more compact. You're recording experiments with the genetic code. Were there any results, any negative results, maybe the most negative thing report that essentially would enlighten uh, uh, the forces, the evolutionary forces that actually led to the development of the code as we know it? So now you're essentially changing it organism wide. Is there anything where you could start speculating about some of the theories that actually led to it uh, 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 to begin with? It, 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 um, the so we're learning a lot of biology. I, I don't think we're ideally positioned to learn that sort of stuff because right now we're dealing with such a mature. Um, ribosome and translation system that we're really dealing with putting out fires that we create that are heavily overlaid with regulatory secondary structure and so forth. I think that there are some uh, theoretical work in literature which I find quite compelling where they look at the, the probability of transitioning to an amino acid that's similar in function and that indicates that the code we have is close to one in a million level of, of optimality, which would argue that the code was not a frozen accident, but it, it was actually a part of optimization that occurred before it got locked in. Um, so that's not our work. Well, the forces that led to optimization almost all. I think that at least one of the things in the literature uh, is that it was, uh, he wanted to be robust to mutations. Um, now, for biotechnology, you might want it to be fragile to uh, mutation. You wanted to lock, you wanted to do what you wanted to do, and you don't want it to go mutating off. Uh, so you, you might want it to break the amount of mutation. Um, so what we want is not necessarily what evolution wanted, but I think the sort of thing we're learning is more about all these complicated, overlapping uh, regulatory elements. And, and we're lucky that there are not more of them, because if there were enough of them, then this would be, it would be very difficult. Gotcha. Yeah. Maybe one of the more about how far along are we from launching a major project using well, so uh, we have uh, CRISPR working in monopolies, the anti-IOS is a There's about 60 different species that have small effects, but the monopolies has the biggest impact. Uh, so we have CRISPR working. We don't yet have a fully functional gene drive. Uh, the Gates Foundation is actually supported. It's not, uh, it's not actually likely to be personally uh, successful because there is, there is a company in this field called Oscar that makes their own males as it is. It has a good business model because it doesn't work. So you have to come back and do it again, or it doesn't completely work. It just it knocks it down and knocks it down. This will spread, and, and that'll be a game over. And so there's no, there's no recurring financial rewards. So I think that that is something that you really need a foundation like these foundations to support. Then, then you also have to convince uh, the local governments, and I think they're, they're pretty excited about it, but you need to also, since the mosquito zone group has been boundaries, you have to kind of convince everybody. So it might be a United Nations level decision. But if you're very convinced, you may as well that you just go down and slide up. And, yeah, then it might be the last experiment I ever did. <laughs> and uh, if you want to convince everybody else, it, even though it sounds really hard, it's, uh, it's worth doing. I mean, almost everything we do has some kind of uh, ethics and, and safety and security. We, we actually, a lot of our technology is aimed at safety and security. Um, it, it takes a little longer. It seems to take longer, but actually, the thing that takes longer is when you have a setback. Um, like, you know, the three deaths at the beginning of the team therapy were not, it was like three out of five, that's not good. Oh. Yes, you should be done.
I, I worry about a lot of things, and that's one of them. Uh, in particular, um, CRISPR is cheap enough, and you can get a CRISPR lab going for about 100 bucks. Uh, so you have, you know, you make you know, centrifuges out of drills, apparently. Uh, um, and then CRISPR gene drives, not much, not much additional effort. And almost everybody has some species they don't like. Uh, and they're not, you know, it might be, you know, spiders or scorpions or, you know, frogs or cats. And pretty soon you're left with, uh, with one species, uh, hopefully, you know, so. <laughs> I mean, hopefully not that they end up with keep all the species. Oh, yeah, come on, I'll look at that. Maybe. I don't know if it's going to look like that. <laughs> okay, we'll count it for taste, yeah. We then let's thank Dr. Sissi and Tony. Um, you know, like creationism. Uh, on Martha's Vineyard, we have 
uh, something like a 40 percent unvaccination rate in one of the schools. And this is unlike in like Massachusetts, in like in Virginia. And then we, you know, we have anti-science. You know, that is an entirely anti-science. Yeah. It, it's, uh, it's also team theory, which is if everybody else is vaccinated, I don't. I get the best of it up. Right, the free rider is the most very, very low risk. It's yeah. the lower risk like that. It, 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 it's everybody else is, yeah. But anyway, I think about you know, the Taliban and the ISIS, the yeah. people who are, whose agenda is to destroy civilization. Yeah. And they go back to some kind of, you know, whatever state you want to call that. And we see that in, I think, in our own Congress. Well, you go back to a state where you can have more prostate. Right. Uh, right. You know, yeah. I mean, the people like me, this is supposedly successful. The guy on one style. Right. You know, you can't finish it. In the old days, you know, I could, I could have, like, you know, eight wives and four kids. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, so you need a more broader society to raise that. Really. Right. Yeah. Our, our, our standards, no. And so let me give you one more key point that you need to talk, right? Yeah. Um, and the other key point is I just uh, finished reading a book um, called Countdown to Zero Day, the history of stuff that virus study, how it was discovered, and uh, what it does. Are you familiar with the basic mechanism of this thing? I'm uh, not really sure. I know the term, but I have. Well, so this was a, this was a very sophisticated uh, attack founded by the United States and Israel and Iran, Iran right? Yeah, and, yeah. and so what happened was, this is, this is the right clear, yeah. yeah. so there's a great book out by a writer named Kent Center or Center or something like that, yeah. um, and it describes how the thing yeah. was discovered, because they did took all kinds of precautions, so whatever you discovered, yeah. but of course you never think of everything. Yeah. Well, I read the this precaution, so it was happening. Right, 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 right. right. But it's always fair. Right. Right. I think it's happening, and they get discovered. Yeah. Yeah. Discovery's not so bad, but... Well, that's right. the point. So let me say this, because so it attacks these embedded controllers that basically run yeah. civilized life, yeah. right? Yeah. They control everything, like, the Hoover yeah. Dam, and the electrical grid yeah. in Boston, and the center of in Iran, yeah. and these things are inherently unsecure. Yeah. And, and when this attack vector got out into the wild, and people figured out how it worked, that was a blueprint yeah. for anybody yeah. in the world, any criminal gang, that's for or yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought it was just a matter of who gets credit for that, you know, for the great right. acts. Right. Uh, that's okay. But yes, the recipe getting out of pocket. Right. Right. I like the recipe for Adam and Hydrogen Bombs being out there. Right. Right. The recipe for making smallpox and various flu variations. Right. 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 Uh, so right. then we're getting into our sweet spot. Yeah. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I said in public that, uh, yeah, you know, the people as well, is that we're getting to the point where we're enabling smaller and smaller groups to do bigger and bigger things. Right. It used to be that if you wanted to be a mass murderer and all you had was a rock, uh, by the time you pull a few people, get people together, right? So, uh, you know, it was just really hard work to, to uh, murder a lot of people. And, and then we got, you know, uh, bows and arrows, and you could like on some people if you were, if you were in a good location. And, uh, and then, you know, automatic weapons, uh, again, location is key. And, and now we're getting weapons of mass destruction, which a fairly large team can assemble. And then, finally, you know, near the end of time, uh, we were right now, uh, you know, at the edge of, uh, you know, 2012, I guess, uh, you know, yeah, the, we're, we're not an end of it. Yeah, right. But there's a little bit of a lot of years ago, and there's some kind of a, uh, existential crisis. But anyway, they, uh, now you can do it with all and then someday with a single individual who had a bad day at school or his girlfriend left somewhere, you know, and he figures, well, if I just take out my girlfriend or myself, uh, I'll stay there, but, you know, it's clearly, it's a broken system. If I'm a sad player, let's go on the sad, let's go on the sad. Or who knows, maybe even less logical, uh, great patterns, right. because there's a whole range of great patterns that there's the person who is kind of, uh, a day. So, anyway, that's dangerous. And it's not clear there's a real solution to it. Every now and then, there'll be these calls for more for you on uh, research or on publishing research. And, and all that means is that you manage to get a few people who are inclined to listen to you, just tend to be the good actors, right? Behaving even better in some way. Right. And then the bad guys are still off doing their research and, and not publishing. It's very good. They're little secret uh, sharing rooms. And uh, it's not really, uh, you kind of found the opposite because now the good guys are ill prepared for what the realities are, right? Because they're not looking into it. They're putting on blinders, and all that guys are just having field day because there's this whole new field of science that they have exclusive uh, right. insight. Right. So that's not good. So not publishing is a problem. Publishing is also a problem. Yeah. Yeah. When the smallpox people came out, some of the you know, 1983 viruses, I said, would I, am I jealous of them being off? Would I like to have been first author or last author? I said, no, I wouldn't. Yeah. But would I stop it if I were a regulator? Yeah, it's hard, you know, hard right. to do that, too. So it's like, say this, you know, I think that's where this that's that virus thing is, is going. Okay, hopefully the people who wrote the code are in a, in a good position to protect. Because well, that's, that's, that's the thing. Yeah. I really recommend this book. Yeah. 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 So by, by thinking of how you would hurt somebody else, you can immediately start paranoiaically protecting yourself. So let's say what they actually did. Yeah. Yeah. So, so in, in hackers speak, there's something called zero-day. Yeah. And, and the zero-day bug is a vulnerability that hasn't been exploited yet. Yeah. Right? So the hackers call four days yeah. for zero-day. Yeah. And so what do you do if you find you're a security researcher, you find, okay, find, a, you find an open door on the Macintosh operating system? Okay. Yeah. Well, you can do a couple of things. You can report it to yeah. Macintosh, right? You can report it to Macintosh. Yeah, you might even get arrested and sent to jail. Somebody says, oh, he was, he was, he was yeah. going around. Yeah. He was poking around. Yeah. 